Okay, so we're gonna do a demon slayer tier list on the upper moon demons. This is purely just opinionated. This isn't based on their strengths or anything like that. It's just how cool I think the demons are in Demon Slayer. And we're starting off strong with Upper Moon 3, Akaza. For Akaza, honestly, uh, by the way, this is going to contain man manga spoilers. For Akaza, purely for his backstory, I think he's an S. I think he's an S. His backstory is great. Overall, he's really, really cool. And uh, honestly, he probably has one of the best redemption arcs in the entire series. Mm, it's kind of a redemption arc, I guess. He just sort of like, you know, defeats himself. But it, it, Akaz is just like top of the tier list. He's like what, what represents a good upper moon demon, I think. Just personality, great backstory, great redemption arc. Absolutely insane fight with not only Rengoku, but then Giyu and Tanjiro. So, easy S tier for Akaza. Next, we have Gyutaro, uh, which is Upper Moon 6. Uh, well, previous Upper Moon 6 before he was beheaded. And based on his personality in the series, based on his fights in the series, I think he's a pretty solid A tier. He doesn't stand out compared to some of the other Upper Moon demons like Akaza, but I, I think he was a very, very cool opponent in the series. And for that alone, I think he's a pretty solid A tier. Unlike his, unlike the next demon on the list, his sister, Daki. I think Daki is kind of a weak character, personally, in my opinion. I think she was kind of just the wall between, you know, the Slayers fighting Gyutaro. I don't know. She just sort of came across very whiny in the show. I think her, because her backstory is connected to Gyotaro, obviously her backstory is also kind of tragic and I think that's what makes a good upper moon demon, but she doesn't possess, other than that, I don't think she possesses any other great qualities. I just don't think she's a very interesting character. And I don't know, she was sort of treated as a bit of a joke as well in the series. I mean, Tengu, uh, Tengen, like decapitated her in like two seconds so overall i think daki's kind of just a very weak character personality wise again her backstory is fine but just overall she's not a very great character so for me she's gonna go down to a c honestly if i had to be quite harsh with it next is doma upper moon 2 demon honestly doma's a pretty interesting character but he's another character where his backstory is just a bit lame he's just evil kind of for the sake of being evil i mean he was brought up to a like he was brought up believing that he was superior to everyone else. So that kind of like feeds into his personality and how he becomes like when he becomes a demon. But overall, I just find him a bit eh. He's great for being like an like an antagonizing character towards Akaza. However, what say oh gosh, what saves um Doma is his connection to Shinobu and Inosuke and technically uh I think it's Kane. His connection to all of them three and his fight with all of them three absolutely puts him like pretty high tier, honestly. I think just his fight alone in the Infinity Castle arc is really, really good. And like I said, just his connection with Inosuke, Shinobu and whatnot makes him a very, very good upper demon. So honestly, I'd put him in A tier, but I would put him behind Gyusuro. I don't think he was... Actually, no, I would put him above Gyusuro. Just purely for... His uh, backstory with Inosuke. Next is Gyoko. I was going to say Gyoko is the demon that went against the Mist Hashira, Murichiro. And honestly, Gyoko was treated a bit of a joke. He like he never he was never really seen as a threat in my opinion, just because purely uh, Murichiro was able to easily, easily body this guy. I think he got the jump on Murichiro once, but other than that, he absolutely got bodied by the Hashira, the Mist Hashira. So I, I just don't think he was that threatening. I feel like he was a bit of a joke, honestly, in the show. Plus that, like the fish whole, the whole fish thing is, ugh. Also for Gyoko's backstory, I'm pretty sure he was a, like a serial killer. I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure that was it though. And obviously he's addicted to his clay, po uh, clay pots or whatever. Honestly, Gyoko is going to go into the first D tier. I don't think he was that memorable. I think he was kind of a bit of a lame demon. So D tier for me. Next is Hantengu, which if we were basing this on the first form of Hantengu, he'd be down there with Gyoko in D tier. But based on the like how the Hantengu fight plays out and his final form, he is very cool. Um, I just like like all the emotions and whatnot like that branch out from him. From him. So Hantengu for me, 
personally is probably going to be above Daki and Beta. I think he had a pretty memorable fight. He felt quite threatening. I mean, Mitsuri, the love Hashira herself, even kind of struggled going against Hantengu. So um, I think overall, Hantengu had a very, very, very good fight. His backstory was a bit naff. It wasn't that great. But overall, I think his fights kind of make up for that. And just his uh, overall abilities kind of make up for that as well. Next is Kaigaku, which is an interesting one. Because Kaigaku um, used to train in Thunder Breathing with Zenitsu. Now... Like I said, manga spoilers. Uh, for those that don't know, Kaigaku ends up running into Kokushibo and knowing that his life could end at any point, he ends up uh, surrendering to Kokushibo and in return, he gives him Muzan's blood. He becomes the new Upper Six Moon Demon, replacing Daki and Gyutaro when they both perish. Um, and so he's kind of like a hybrid. He uses Thunder Breathing with his Demon, Slay uh, demon abilities. And overall, he's... A pretty interesting character, although I don't very much like his personality and it was very satisfying when Zenitsu did sort of behead him in the manga. So for that alone, I'm going to put him probably just behind Hentengu. I think, again, he's in more interesting than Daki and um, Gyoko, but I think overall he's just kind of a bit of a... Not on not a, like a, a, an annoying character, but he is just a bit whiny and that alone kind of puts him down a couple notches if he wasn't so whiny honestly he could he could make eta just because his fight with zenitsu is honestly legendary next is koko shibo which again is a very very good uh example of a great upper moon demon great backstory i mean he's related to the first ever sun breather so for that fact alone he is gonna probably go into s tier his fight with all the hasharas is really great and honestly he just overall is a very threatening character not to mention that his moon breathing is really freaking cool and honestly moon breathing is kind of up there as like one of the coolest breathing styles in my personal opinion his brother is with uh yorichi who is the sun breather and the first ever you know demon slayer who uses breathing techniques. So for that fact alone, he's going up in S. He's not as good as Akaza, I think, only because Akaza has a very, very good backstory in Redemption Arc, like I said earlier. So for that fact alone, I think Koko Shibo just falls short behind Akaza, but he is a very, very strong S tier easily. And his fight with the other Hashiras is phenomenal, honestly. Um, now the last upper moon demon, is this Nakime? I think this is Nakime. Yeah, that's Nakime. So she fights um, Mitsuri and Obanai in the Infinity Castle. And honestly, her power is kind of cool. However, purely because we don't know, purely because she doesn't speak too much and she doesn't have much of a personality other than just following Muzan's orders, um, she's kind of on the lower end for me personally i don't think she's that interesting of a character i think her backstory is kind of interesting obviously uh she plays whatever instrument that's called again <laughs> i forgot it but um she she plays that instrument and her backstory is that when she killed people she played better on like for shows and whatnot so for that for that fact alone i think she's a pretty interesting character but i don't think she's super interesting to me personally she's kind of like down with daki mm, actually no i would put a lower i'd put a lower i'd put her down with gyoko but i i think she's at just above gyoko for me because i really didn't like gyoko but i think nakime just overall isn't a super interesting character necessarily i think her backstory is kind of interesting and her, her demon abilities are kind of interesting but overall i think she's a very just kind of naff character her the fight with Obanai and Mitsuri is kind of cool, but overall, I think that's mainly because Obanai and Mitsuri just are very cool Hashiras. And that's my tier list. That is my tier list. <laughs> that's what I would rate the Upper Moon Demons, personally. Again, um, I think most of these are pretty accurate for me, personally, just because of their backstories, their personalities, and their demon abilities. Again, this tier list isn't based on how strong the Upper Moon Demons are. Otherwise, this list would be completely different. It was purely, purely just based on how I feel towards the Upper Moon Demons. I mean, I'm sure when we watch the Infinity Castle arc, when it's animated, this tier list might change slightly. But I think if it does, it'll only be like the upper ones that change, like Doma might go into an S tier potentially but overall i think this is a fairly okay tier list for me 